This is one of those news stories that comes up every once in a while. Here we had a band of teachers come out and talk about how Baldy Locks the misogynist is slowly ruining the lives and experiences of British students. How this plague will slowly end civic society in the UK and how his influence is going to lead to massive amounts of crime and that we are in fact all doomed. And it's a plight that many have sympathy for. Dears are normally stupid wrapped up in this traditionalist moralising that he doesn't really seem to understand. But I don't think the problem is all him. To start, if you're a university-educated teacher, and you're losing a debate on the virtues of misogyny to a 13-year-old, the problem might not take. So some teachers might be better suited to taking some of the responsibility on themselves. Their arguments might not be that good, especially if those opinions do not seem particularly appealing to 50% of the human species. But I think the problem for this can be really broken down into two, which is that a significant number of people growing up nowadays don't really have parents, and that there's a certain amount of nihilism around the academic abilities of many of the people currently enrolled in education. Now, I'm not a parent, but I am young enough to remember what it's like growing up, and as I grew up mostly past the 2000s, I grew up in an age where many would say that my parents were soft, entitled, and where millennials dominated a significant amount of younger culture. What the lack of discipline and the constant use of terrible ideas seems to indicate is that a number of parents, especially a number of millennial parents, seemingly believe the responsibility of the state is to in fact raise their children, and this is a responsibility that many teachers are simply not prepared for, that being that they either don't have children themselves, or that the university course doesn't cover how to actually raise kids. This offloading of responsibility has led to a number of children that are pieces of garbage, a number of parents that actively hate their own children, and we're seeing the negative effects of that in schools. The second would be the academic achievement. Constantly there being arguments that the education system is making exams easier, so, A star is best, C is good, and a U is a problem. You know, don't pass code, don't collect 200 pounds. So when your kid says they got a 7, where are you going to start? For the people that want it, this is the conversion table from Ofqual. You can pause here and have a look. And judging by the number of people searching for this table, this is apparently somewhat confusing. So the question some of you might be asking is why no one in the press wants to talk about why. Why go from the easy-to-understand supremacy of letters to the mess of numbers and awful full sentences? But what the fuck is a strong pass? So to understand this, we need to take a trip down memory lane to 2010 and its Cameron time. With Dominic Cummings and Michael Gove in the Department of Education, you know this is going to end well. So they begin the project of torrifying the education system. And this plan starts with the mass expansion of academies and reducing funding. This did all start under Blair and Brown, but with budget cuts and austerities, the new in thing. They were taking it into overdrive, and academic results inevitably suffered. From higher pass rates, but less people getting into the top grades, to the news flip-flopping from year to year, the trends were, however, obvious. Educational standard that went 20 years of straight improvement fell into stagnation with accusations that tests were getting easier and the kids were getting dumber. I did my GTSEs at about this time and I remember my parents getting concerned. So in 2015 the government found a better way to get people to stop complaining. Changing the grading system. Implementing the policy over two years, it would take effect in 2017 where letters were out and numbers were in and they weirdly chose to start with English and maths. You would think that testing a new system, they would start with something that doesn't matter, like geography or religious studies. But maths and English is where the biggest drop in performance was most noticeable. And therein lies the main reason for the change. If you can't directly compare the grades of your kids to your own, or one child's to another, how do you know they're not smart? So that chart I showed you earlier, it's not even that accurate, but it is put out by the government. This is a comparison between the maths GCSE exams of AQA from 2015 to 2023. 
Now, there are higher and foundational papers, but a four or a standard pass on the higher maths paper in 2023 took 24%, which means that you can get 75% of the paper wrong and still pass. A standard pass, in fact. This grade switched on most of the news stories about exams getting easier, so for Grove it was a success and an easy win. But were exams getting easier? Out of curiosity and boredom, I decided to do the 2023 higher calculator paper. Other than radical tax policy, it wasn't that hard. And then again, I have a master's degree in civil engineering, so it ought not to be. But would I consider someone good at maths if they got 75% of that paper wrong? No. And this is what the government is attempting to hide. If you could compare your grades and the papers your kids completed in the same way that I have and have the free time to do, it would be easy to see students are falling behind. But you can't. The earliest paper I can find is 2016, and that's just as the grades switched. Maybe if you could go back to 2008 and see the standards are dropping and the kids are getting dumber. But instead you get caught up in a confusing grading system with multiple different papers and additions. So you give up and you move on. Your child makes it into their A-level or apprentice scheme. But in comparison with the rest of the OECD, we are steadily falling behind. We are one of only three countries where the youth are mathematically dumber than the elderly and the only developed country where the young are less literate than the old. And this report coming from London School of Economics is stuck and it's coming from a reputable source, not a YouTuber that did an exam. Early data from this year shows the problem isn't going away, and COVID's impact on students is already beginning to terrify teachers and charities. The great switch the Tories introduced to hide their fuck-ups is now allowing most people to sleepwalk into the total decay of the education system. And if Labour were hoping the UK was going to get radically smarter in the next couple of years, they are going to be sorely mistaken. Is there a solution to this? I don't know. Probably not. But maybe having a little bit more transparency wouldn't help. But this has been a Politic Chalk video. If you enjoyed, consider giving a like, maybe even subscribe. But do come back for more.